Hi guys, uh, this is a tutorial on, I guess it's on blueprints, but it's also talking about modeling anatomy um, and possibly other things, some hard surface kind of things as well, but I'll kind of show you. And the reason I'm recording this tutorial is because I had an email from a user who wanted to model um, a horse's leg, um, which is a bit of a specific request, but I think it's quite a good one. Um, so I had to go at it really quickly um, and I, I, there's a method for doing it and it's pretty good, it's pretty quick, it's nice and easy to learn and it can be used for a lot of other things as well. So we're going to do that now. Um, the first thing to say when it comes to modeling a horse's leg is I don't really know what a horse's leg looks like um, in that much detail until I look at one. Um, obviously I know it's got a hoof, I don't know where the joints go, I really don't, I'm not, I'm not that into horses I don't know much about them so get yourself some reference material and even more specific than reference material we're going to use blueprints on this one so I did just a quick google search for horses leg anatomy and the one image that I really liked was this one it's quite big and um, so we've got a side view of a horse's leg there we've got the skeleton and we've got a front view I mean this is just the muscle I guess so it would be a little bit fatter than that um, and then what I did was, I created some blueprints in Photoshop from this. And by blueprints, I just mean some profile images. So some front on images, a side on image um, that I could use. I'm going to load them into Cheetah now so you can see what I did. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more as I go. So in a Cheetah document, in this tag here, you've got this blueprint option. I've put that in the scene and it's here, you can't see it yet, but what this does is it gives us some options in the properties window over here. So you've got a front, back, left, right, top and bottom and you can load images into there. So in the front, I'm going to load this front image and in the left, I don't know if it's left or right actually, but I'm just going to use this side one, it doesn't really matter for the sake of this. So as I rotate around, there we go in my camera view now we kind of got this rear wall and this side wall which we can use for reference now because I want to model and actually if you notice the um, yeah, maybe you can see this maybe you can't on YouTube the actual text is backwards so we can click on this flip thing and then I'm gonna have to spin the camera around but now the text is forwards not a big deal on this one because the reference um, Images are still there, whether they're forwards or backwards, I can always flip the model later on. And yeah, that is pretty much good to go. The one thing that I would say is, because I actually want to model this largely in the left view, and the back view or front view, you may just need to change this culling to none. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. It really depends on how you set it up. So what I do to start this is I'm going to start with a cylinder and it's going to be nowhere near that big. What I would say is when you're adjusting uh, an object that's not yet um, collapsed, you've not collapsed the mesh, don't use the scale tool here. Try and avoid that if you can. If you're just altering the scale in general, try and use these properties over here. And the reason is you won't mess with the UVs of the object and it can be kind of important there's ways around fixing it if you don't do it that way but if you can get into that habit then by all means do so what I'm doing is I'm just going to jump into front view which I've shouldn't have pressed but I've pressed keyboard shortcut number three to get into front view and I'm going to zoom right into here so I'm just basically trying to create a start point I've got far too many sections in that leg there I'm going to change that to eight sections on that cylinder which is a bit better and I'm going to scale it to be somewhere like that. Uh, let's open that radius up a little bit. It's a bit small. Something like that. I'm happy with that. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to jump back into my main camera view for the minute. And then I'm going to collapse this mesh for this cylinder over here by double clicking. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to take my selection. And I'm just going to delete all the polygons from the top and bottom. Not really super important right now but it's just the way I like to do things then I'm going to go back into this view here so using area select which is worth mapping to a, a key I use A for area select but I'll do it here for now 
I'm just going to drag over these top, sorry, I need to be in edge mode here. So I'm just going to area select over there and you can see hopefully I've got a selection there and I'm going to go into the transform widget. And basically it's a case of just positioning these polygons in line with the blueprint. And then I'm going to call cover. I'll just do this a couple of times using the uh, control click or right click, whatever you use. I'll call cover and then I'm going to pull that up a little bit. I'm just going to scale it in and move it across. What you're trying to do is just kind of where the what your reference image changes. You're trying to make sure that you change your model accordingly. And try and keep a fairly oh, lost my selection there. Try and keep a fairly consistent spacing. Why is my cover not working? It is working. I've absolutely destroyed that. I'm gonna to have to go back a few steps here. What have I done? Not sure. Okay. So I'm gonna call cover and then pull that up. And that is not working again for me. I'm having some issues here today. Let's find out what that is. Area select. I'm just gonna control click cover. T for transform. Move that up and it isn't working. That is interesting. Why is that not working? I don't know. I'll tell you what. This is kind of good because it shows you how I go about fixing things when they're not actually behaving for me. So I'm just going to delete that there. And I'm going to try again. Cover. Transform tool. Pull it up. Now we are behaving let's hope it doesn't break again I'm going to call cover again I'm pressing C on my keyboard and then I'm going to pull this up yeah we're actually working don't know what happened there not to worry so yeah again I'm trying to keep the spacing generally fairly consistent between my polygons so you see the gap from this one to this one is pretty similar to there and so on and so on so I'm just matching the width of this image as I go. Calling cover. Again pulling up with the transform tool which is remaining selected while I'm using cover which is handy. Cover and pull that up. I'm only going to go to about there on this one. Uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom area so we can see this here. I would press T for transform there. Yep, about there. We'll call another cover. Pull that down. Scale it in. Just going to move it to the right a little bit. Uh, cover again. Pulling down. Scaling in. Cover again. Pulling down. Just keep going. Until you get all the way to the bottom. Nearly there now. Widening out here for the... Is it an ankle? Is that what they call it on a horse? I really don't know. So here I can't actually keep the same distance between my polygons. But that's alright. We need that geometry to be there. So don't worry too much about that. And my reference image here is possibly not perfect for what I need. So I'm just going to kind of loosely model this bit around how it needs to be. Um, probably going to leave that something like that. Sorry, jump into... So if I zoom out, what we've got there in this front view is essentially something that looks the right shape, more or less. Um, what we now need to do, that's not right on its own. So if I look at that now in the camera view, it doesn't look right at all. So we now need to match this up in the side view as well. So I'm looking at this from the left view. Clicking on my cylinder again. And I'm going to use area select, which I've got mapped to A. I need to be in edge mode here. So area select these top polygons. Again, just scaling on just the one axis, not all. So don't be scaling 
from the centre point. Just use the one axis that you're working on. Otherwise, it will go horribly wrong. So I'm using area select to drag around. Then I'm pressing T for transform. If you haven't got these hotkeys set up or you haven't got any hotkeys set up, I recommend you watch my other video on YouTube which will explain to you how to do that, why to do it, uh, some of the ones that I use. Again, I'm, I'm just following this down. I'm going to match it up to the image. So area selecting each time. Kind of pushing it to the center point and then transforming out accordingly. There go my fans again. I actually tried to take my Mac apart at uh, the weekend to try and clean my fans out. I won't be doing that again in a hurry. Didn't work, as you can hear. Um, but boy, is it complex in there. I think I just need to buy a new one. So here, I'm not quite right. Let's just have a look at this. I'm not going to be exact, I think we're going to get near enough. But the good thing about using blueprints is it does give you an incredibly accurate starting point. And, you know, who knows the anatomy of a horse's leg that well? Not me, not me. And I've modelled one today already. So we're getting there. What I may suggest you do when you start to get to the more complex areas, because you can't really see what you're doing so much anymore, is you may want to, on your cylinder, you may want to come here and go into your edit shading. You may want to go to something like wires. You might not get on with these, but you might. So now I can see through. Same technique all the way. Once you've kind of had a bit of a blow of it for a few minutes, it'll be, it'll be in for life. I'm just going to turn off the grid. You see the grid's getting a little bit mixed up with my wires here. Let's turn that grid off there. And we're back. Scaling in again. Here we go. Just lost my selection there, which does happen. What I like to do here, where the actual angle of the foot has changed, is I do try and get the angle the same. So rather than it just being a case of scaling in, what I will do is rotate as well. And I'll try and get that rotation so that this loop around the leg here is, is roughly the same, the same angle as what we're aiming for. So I'll do the same here, so I'll scale in a bit until we're around there. Then I'll start to rotate. I think that is about the right angle. I'm just going to pull it up there. Scale that in. There we go. And we're nearly done now. Let's bring this one to somewhere there. Scale that around. And I'm way off at the moment with this one, but we'll get there. That will do me. And I'll just grab this one here. And we're just going to push that hoof forward. And in fact, it's nowhere near wide enough, is it? Okay, so the hoof is a bit off at the moment, but we will maybe we'll correct that. I don't know. Maybe it will be okay. Okay, so... Just looking at that, we kind of roughly matched that up. Bit of an issue there. See that section there. Just going to scale that out a little bit and just move it forward a little bit. We're a little bit off there, but I can handle that for now. And coming back into camera mode, looking at our shaded view. And that is not a bad horse's leg. Uh, is that what you call it? A leg? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm going to get rid of my blueprints for now. Well, actually, I'll just turn them off in the editor and the renderer. I don't think they render anyway, actually. What I will do here 
it's just for this hoof, I'm just going to place a ring cut, which I'll do my control click in ring cut, just around there, just nice and tight to the the loop just above that. I'm not a massive fan of using um, creases in cheetah. Creases are when you're using uh, subdivision and you need a hard edge rather than a soft edge. A crease will stop that edge from kind of softening. I don't really like them, they don't give you that much control. A crease is either a crease or not. Whereas if you put one ring cut or one cut near another, you get full control over that. Um, and I, I kind of prefer that. So I'm also going to come into point mode and I'm going to control click and I'm going to go to fill hole and I'm going to click on that point there that will fill that one. I'm going to go into polygon mode and using the arrow I'm going to select that. I'm going to call it inner extrude. I'm just going to extrude that in a very 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 small amount like so and maybe one more time like that. And then I'm going to control click on collapse wherever that lives. There it is. And collapse. I'm going to change that to middle. I'm going to click on that polygon there. There we go. We've collapsed that. And what these cuts will do is if we put a subdivision on it, which we may or may not, I mean, I've done this obviously pretty low polygon at the moment. Um, but that's not a bad horse's leg. Uh, and that is a good technique, you know, you can use this in hard surface modelling, you can use it in, uh, it's really good for um, modelling characters and things like that. If you've got those blueprints available, um, get them in there, use them as a guide. Uh, it will certainly teach you a lot about the, the way that um, people and, and animals and objects are formed. Uh, and it's, it's just a really accurate way of doing things. Um, so I hope you learned something there, I hope you can put that to use somewhere else. I'm not going to render on this, there's no point rendering a single horse's leg I guess. Um, well not like this anyway. Um, but that's it for today, so thanks for watching, I hope you've learned something uh, and get your blueprints, have some fun. Uh, as usual, loads more stuff at mac3dsoftware.com. Still firing out the quick tips, uh, I'm still trying to make some more premium tutorials, I haven't done any for a while. Uh, I've got plans for some, I've got some semi-in-development, um, but keep checking back guys, so thanks a lot and goodbye.